Oh my god, the new Astros! <laughs> yeah. How much are they? Um, sorry, I, sorry, I don't speak English. Wait, these have simultaneous Bluetooth? Of course it's simultaneous. But only with the base station. Well, I carry mine with me. <laughs> What's with all the console ports? You only play PC games. Well, I got a PlayStation. And just like that, a lot of firsts for me as well. My first console, my first Astro product, my first time realizing the pain of controller aim. Like I truly appreciate gamers who are good with controllers. And I would say this is a first over-engineered, trying to be this god-tier gaming headset that does so many things right, from microphone quality to fantastic EQ controls to really good audio drivers. Strangely though, I feel like it's the hero feature of the A50X, the multi-platform compatibility, being able to connect it to a PlayStation Xbox and the PC at the same time is why most people will not buy this headset. Because on paper and specs wise, this thing is like the GOAT in the wireless space, but it comes with many, many caveats. Number one is both your PC and console connected to the same display or monitor. Number two, will you find it convenient? Let's say listening to something on PC one second and with a switch of a button, you go to the audio source to a console and also the audio and visual changes as well. Like, is this something that is going to be a value add for you? And number three, because of this whole multi-platform compatibility, you're not just buying a gaming headset, you are buying an AV switcher at the same time. And that's why the price is so high. And it works by redirecting your PlayStation and Xbox video and audio signals via HDMI. And the USB-C is there for the game voice chat functionality. But the HDMI is a full 2.1, so HDR supported, VRR, 4K 120Hz, and full bandwidth HDMI with 24-bit audio. So this thing is completely packed with the, the features. And it's nice because it removes any thinking of incompatibility with your PlayStation or Xbox because everything is built into one. Specs wise, it's very impressive, but people are reporting issues of the base station not routing their HDMI signal to their TVs and their LG monitors, LG specifically for some reason. Logitech is rolling out a firmware update, but make sure to search A50X issues on Reddit to see which TVs and monitors are impacted. Also in the pack, you don't get any HDMI cables and only a single USB-C cable, so you would need to provide that yourself for everything to work properly. Now, comfort-wise, being my first Astro product, I'm impressed. Weight-wise is not an issue. I'm being supported by both the headband and the ear cups. They work just fine with glasses. Size extension is available, although I did find the clamp before it's a little tight when I took them out, out of the box, but leaving them stretched out on a box overnight really solved it for me. And after a few weeks of this thing, really has kind of loosened up to exactly fit uh, my head perfectly fine. They do fold on your neck and I find the wider spacing between the headband means it's an extremely comfortable headset to wear on your neck. And even though I'm wearing a hoodie, they are being supported, but I mean, look at this, the ear cups angle down so they fit nicely around your neck. There's no choking anywhere. Well done. It is one of the best to have around your neck for sure. I'm a huge fan of the ear cup material. It's both soft enough on your skin for that pleasant contact and it's also breathable. But I find it surprising that uh, they're so conveniently removable with magnets, which is really nice, but no replacement ear cushions are included. You can go for third party and Wicked, etc. but Logitech now owns Astro and Logitech is kind of known to include sort of these value add accessories. Like the Expo 2 Lightspeed has velour and leather ear pads included to change the dynamic of the isolation and the sound properties. And you would think for such an expensive new Logitech headset, they would uh, include a spare, but no. Although I will say I do not mind the stock open nature of the ear pads, which means I can hear myself, you know, perfectly fine and not being super isolated into my gaming environment, which I actually prefer this type of semi-open feel. And also another thing is that you cannot accidentally replace the ear cups in the wrong spot. The plastic housing goes only one way, left or right placement. As for build quality, so this is where things kind of derail for me. And so Astro is kind of known to have subpar and questionable build quality in the long term. Although I will say out of the box, they feel good. Like nothing's creaking. The plastic feels like it can withstand some flexing over time, but there are some worrying inconsistencies. First, the swivel joints feel totally different. The left one is nice and smooth. The right one almost feels like it's going through gears. It has like this like rotation that does not feel great. On the same ear cup, the side extension is grinding on the interior versus 
The left one is nice and smooth again, although both have the same density of the up and down movement. The soft touch coating is back and that's going to be an issue in the long term. It's already getting scuffed up right beside the buttons as I try to reach for the volume or any of the three buttons and maybe I brush over this uh, part of the headset with my nail and it's already uneven. Some of the stuff is peeling off already. And it's also the first contact when you place them down. So that's going to wear off real quickly, especially in a hotter environment. The headband piece that contains the foam, I feel like is going to be the first thing to break because as you extend the headset, I don't have much confidence in this and how it's constructed. The good thing is that's replaceable, but I feel like that's the first thing that's gonna go. All the screws were tightened properly, so nothing was loose. As for the base station, I wish it wasn't glossy, but the magnets are strong enough to capture the headset for charging. Uh, just make sure the microphone is on the left side. That's where the pins are located. This way you can see the power LED on the headset alongside the four LEDs on the station, which makes sense, but the headset can easily be sucked into the station with the microphone on the right side, but in that orientation, it will not charge. And it feels like it still sits in the base properly, even though it doesn't have the microphone cut out on the base station. And you have to make sure that the size extensions are identical on both sides, because otherwise, uh, if one side is fully extended and the other isn't, it will not align properly. It's not that big of a deal, but I hope to see a more refined and foolproof design in the future. Logitech, please. Earth, she is beautiful. I have my favorite spots in nature to observe and visit, and I'm sure you do too. And I feel we all need a little beauty in our daily computer life, something that reminds you a case can be special too. Feeling proud of your process to get there, partially to showcase your lifestyle with this one component that is surprisingly organic, both in design and hardware fitment. It's not just a case, it's a Terra, available only on our beautiful Earth. I am totally impressed with this microphone. This is by far Logitech's best microphone and the gaming headset. And this coming from a wireless pair, and this is the default preset without any noise gate. And it's kind of ironic, the quality is so good, yet there is no blue voice functionality built into this one. It is built into the other G Pro X headsets, for example, but not in the A50X, which I'm happy about because sometimes those settings can get a little convoluted when the microphone sounds good enough, just stick to that. Although I do like the broadcast preset, which gives you a little bit more bass and you can customize the EQ to your content. As for noise gate, so right now you've been listening to with that off, enabling the home noise gate setting. I find it to be a little too aggressive and when I stop speaking, it really drops the volume. So I would say in a gaming scenario where there's gonna be a bunch of other things in the background, this is going to be my preferred setting, but for recording, I would definitely keep it to off. This is the tournament noise gate preset. You can hear it really, when I stop speaking, it just really drops the volume and it does a good job trying to bring it back up. And this is going to be a no-go for my use, but uh, I guess in a really loud environment, this is going to be better than nothing. And finally, here's the night preset, which is definitely more subtle in its noise cancellations of the background sounds whenever you stop speaking, but I still prefer the quality with noise gate at off. Here's the competition preset, which really kills the bass and boosts the high end, but not too much, but this is going to be very beneficial for competitive games where you don't want to introduce any muddiness or that uh, low end when you're talking to your teammates in like CS2 or anything sound sensitive. Just for reference, here's the latest Logitech headset before the Astros, the Pro X2 Lightspeed. This is what this garbage microphone sounds like with the whole blue voice functionality built in you can somewhat make this microphone usable with all the settings from blue voice but all the settings with blue voice would be much better suited when you have the bandwidth like on the a50x and not with the pro x2 lightspeed and just for reference here's one of my favorite microphones on a gaming headset and the fact that this thing is wireless is incredible the black shark v2 pro the 2020 uh, three edition, but the problem is the microphone's already kind of getting loose. I'm not a huge fan of the audio quality here, uh, but the microphone sounds beautiful. It's rich. It doesn't have as much resolution as the A50X does, but still, it's uh, competing in that space of being like a bit more broadcasty on the Razer versus a bit more natural and condenser like on the Astros. I really like this microphone arm. It's long enough, it's flexible, and stays in position where you set it. You can get it really close to your mouth for that beautiful resolution. It also mutes when you flip it up. Right now, you can't hear what I'm saying. Or can you? What? Annoyingly, the tactile point where the mic mutes isn't very tactile at all. Also, you cannot adjust the gain of the microphone in G-Hub, which is strange. And when you go into the microphone settings, side tone is nowhere there. You have to go into the headset properties instead. 
I wonder why they put that there. But the side tone is so clear and loud in my headset. Without any latency, this is how you do it. Also one tip, do not use the mic test functionality in G-Hub because for me, it introduced a lot of crackle and I thought, oh my God, I have a broken microphone. If you wanna hear how you sound, enable side tone because that's very clear and true to life or do a quick recording in Windows or wherever you are. All right, so let's talk usability and first Bluetooth is an afterthought. So it's nice that it's simultaneous so you can listen to your PlayStation console, Xbox, at the same time as a Bluetooth source coming in, but the Bluetooth is connected to the base station and not to the headset directly. Removing any wireless freedom around your house, so as soon as you're out of range with your phone to the base station, no more Bluetooth for you. Unfortunately also, the Bluetooth button in the back here is only to activate pairing mode, which is unfortunate because this could have been the perfect opportunity to introduce a power switch for the Bluetooth activity, which means when this thing goes to sleep, even though 15 minutes prior I disconnected it from my phone, it would automatically reconnect when this thing powers back on again, which is why I love the Nova Pro Wireless so much. It has a dedicated power switch for Bluetooth audio and headset audio independently. There's also no way to remap that button if you don't care about Bluetooth at all. So it's an afterthought for sure. The same applies to the voice and game balance volume buttons on the right side. I know this is more used for console play, but I would love to have the option to remap them to my game, for example, or EQ changes but that is not possible. There are no physical controls on the base station and the IO at the back is a little weird. For either console, you'll need HDMI 2.1 and a USB-C cable with only a single USB-C cable included, but the PC input in red is joined with a power brick for the actual power for the base station and not a standalone input. And also you notice there is no video signal for your PC. So if you're like me with a PC and a console of some kind on the same desk, Switching from PlayStation to PC is no problem. Once you cycle to PC, it shuts down the HDMI signal, but going from PC to the PlayStation doesn't work that way. So I have to still physically manually change the input on the monitor to go back from my PC to the console. I like the concept and the convenience of switching between sources, but not having video signal feels half-baked because I could still plug in my PC with the VHDMI to the base station, the Xbox port, because I don't have Xbox, and it worked just fine. I could still get full signal, 1440p, 120 hertz, no problem. But the headset was not actually being detected in PC software as one of the devices, even though I had the Xbox USB-C cable plugged in. So the USB-C ports on here are console specific, but the HDMI signals are not. They're more like source one and source two. So that's where you gotta be careful if you're not using HDMI to pass the signal. And if you are using only USB-Cs for your consoles, uh, make sure you're plugging in the right one. Now to cycle between your sources, we have the play sync button and you only tap it and not hold it like it says on the instructions. The problem is that even if you have only one source connected and you click the button, it will cycle between the sources and not smart enough to detect what is connected. So if you accidentally press this thinking you're pressing the Bluetooth button, it will disconnect from your main source and will cycle into it until you can find go back to your PC, PS or Xbox. Also, this is minor, but the PS and PC signs are right right next to each other and they're kind of hard to distinguish from a distance. There's no voice prompt when you switch sources, so I'd love to see some color coding or a clear visual distinction between which source you're on. As for the audio experience, so comfort is fantastic, although I would love to see pleather ear cushions included, but despite that, audio is really impressive. Despite having this semi-open feel, the low end has power, volume output is never an issue, and the headset has its own volume control inside, plus you can adjust the source volume as well. They're loud enough for whatever instances, and they have Dolby Atmos licenses built in, so playing Spider-Man 2, Really enjoyable of being able to listen to New York and taxis and the crowds and feeling distance of the space you're flying through in between buildings, it's great. Honestly, from a sound point of view, this is my top three. I love the bandwidth and the resolution of this thing right next to the Pro X2 Lightspeed and the Audazi Maxwell. Imaging and Battlefield, for example, was clear. You can detect distance and if you hear footsteps but don't see friendlies on the minimap, you know what's coming up. If you've tried the finals, there's a lot of vertical movement and audio cues are really, really important because the footsteps are quite heavy. So being able to hear something that's coming up and being able to prepare for that encounter is super important and the A50X did not disappoint in the slightest. I absolutely love all the boss fights in Returnal because of the sound profile and there is not just beautiful and cool music in the background, but the sound has uh, all, almost like depth and functionality built into the gameplay, being able to know when your secondary fire is ready or when you do a successful overload reload. It's a really fun headset from that point of view of uh, being able to almost max out the volume but not 
have uh, ear fatigue, lots of good treble, smooth high end, and no distortion, even at uh, that peak max volume that you're comfortable with. And you even have latitude for EQing this thing properly, that for a wireless pair is uh, not very common. So 24 bit here is awesome because you can still play around with the EQ, add little bass or add low treble, whatever, and it's not gonna fall apart in the audio department. The 24 hour battery life is kind of irrelevant if the headset is properly docked and is charging. The USB-C port at the bottom is for charging only and not for wired use, unfortunately. And I appreciate that when you're out of range, the signal just drops and is not trying to brute force some really broken, nasty signal into the, the headset, like some other headsets do, like Corsair is really bad with this. The signal just drops and it picks up immediately when you're back in range. Now, from a value point of view, if you're just on the one system, it's definitely not worth it. 379 becomes a slightly better value if you combine all three sources at the same time. And Logitech says that 67% of gamers play on multiple platforms. It's kind of an expensive audio product to connect all three because it requires all three to be in the same monitor, in the same space, and most gamers have like a console on their big TV and PC on a proper monitor, for example. So it is a bit of a more of a niche product than I expected. And it's still somewhat convenient supporting all three platforms and being able to conveniently switch between the three as long as you are, you know, able to also switch sources manually going from the PC to the console. Now, if you're on multiple platforms, let me know if this is something you've been missing in your life in terms of gaming audio and if the convenience factor is, you know, worth 379 for you. I'm Dimitri. I'll talk to you in the next video.